Hello, uh, welcome to um, one of the tutorial on creating realistic uh, tiling, tiling or tiles in um, Cinema 4D. We're going to go for a kind of photorealistic kind of look. Um, if you do have Cinema 4D and you're one of my learners and you're going to be taking part or you are taking part on the level design summer brief that starts July the 6th, by all means, this tutorial applies to you, or if you're just looking at wanting to create kind of more realistic bits and pieces, um, this video can help you out, essentially. So what we're gonna do is, um, I've been playing a lot of Last of Us, a lot of Uncharted, and I kind of like um, all those kind of tiling and stuff um, in there. So, in those kind of games. So I'm gonna kind of um, do a kind of bit of a cheat sheet, really, of how we can achieve this. Um, within a very, 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 very simple um, little tutorial here. So what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna make sure our layout, this is if you've got standard Cinema 4D, you'll start with this. But we're gonna to go to layout and we're gonna to go to sculpt because what we're gonna do is sculpt the edges and make it look really cool um, and kind of get that roughness that you kind of see with a lot of um, tiles and stuff that you do uh, that you get in a lot of games and buildings and walls and everything like that so it's knowing how to kind of get those little scuff marks and not going kind of over the top with everything so we're going to add a cube um, that's perfectly fine uh, duh, 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 duh. so as you can see we've got the size x y let's change the size of y to 4 I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more to this so we can see what's happening as we go along. Um, also, just to help you, just to kind of so you can see what's going on, I'm just going to quickly go to uh, display and there's your rude shade shading lines so you can see what's happening. At the moment, we've only got one segment, so we need a lot more to um, essentially subdivide a bit later so we can see what's going on. So if we change that segment to 25, change those segments to 4, change those segments to 25. Um, there we go, lovely. We're gonna fill it this as well. Um, again, not every tile that we see in in the real world, no tile is perfect. So um, we're gonna add a little bit of fillet. Two centimeters seems a bit too much. Let's do 0.5 and fillet subdivision. Let's change that to two. There we go. So we've got this nice looking kind of flat kind of tile that we can start with. And what we're going to do is um, for now, I'm just going to turn off um, the Giroud shading lines because you can see what's happened now. I'm just going to go back to normal Giroud shading and I'm going to make this tile editable. You can either do C on the keyboard or just click the editable uh, button up here. Um, so with this kind of thing, uh, I feel that a lot of people, especially for games, go over the top. It doesn't need to be over the top. With, um, with the amount of subdividing you do when you're sculpting on um, something really, really simple like this, which we're just gonna duplicate lots of times anyway. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna subdivide this, and let's do like two layers. So we do, get up to a current level around two. That works kind of nice. And what I'm gonna do is zoom in, so we're gonna have a look at these edges, as you can see here, lovely, lovely. Um, and if we click on our knife tool, we can see um, if we start to do bits of our knife tool, we can see that we're already doing way over the top. We don't want to do this. So let's go back just like that. Lovely. Um, and what I'm gonna do is change the settings of my knife tool. Um, let's change the size to two, and uh, pressure to 1% and the length to 30. I always do this as a general guide and then go up from there kind of thing of what I kind of want to do. And this is really good. If I zoom in here, you can really kind of see what we're gonna be able to do with this. So we're gonna, as I'm on the edges here, as you can see, I'm gonna quickly just scratch, kind of scratch this up and already you can see it doesn't take long to kind of make these lines just a little bit imperfect. That's absolutely fine, these are good, this is quite good. Um, let's cut into here as well, across here, that's fine. 
So the pressure is really, really light. And we're just going to go up there, come back down a bit. So we don't want anything that's too distinguishable, simply because you, we are going to um, clone these a number of times, duplicate these a number of times, and you will be able to see all those duplications. We don't really, really want that. So that's why I'm just doing a really kind of soft kind of edit just to kind of convey the message that it can be it's really nice and simple doesn't have to be anything too confusing and there you go it's going to come across here again if you don't have cinema 4d don't worry, this is pretty much possible in all um, 3D softwares, even if you're a team blender, as I have more and more people telling me they are so these days, that's perfectly fine with them, that's perfectly fine with me, but I really like Cinema 4D, maybe the easiest 3D software to learn, kind of get your head around. And it all goes in unity at the end of the day. So for gaming, it's perfect. And for making cool, realistic, 3D, cool looking windows really quickly, it's even better. So I'm just gonna quickly go across this part and go across to here. And we also have um, Patrick doing some sessions on Maya as well from Autodesk and again if you're a student um, it's never been a better time to be a student within game design because all of this software is free if you're a student you can get a cinema 4d for free you can get Maya for free you can you can get it all for free so let's just finish off this edge here gonna go across And again, as you can see, there's no, not really any thinking behind it. It's just making sure that all the edges just look a little bit dodged up. Lovely, as you can see, yeah, we can see all around here that all of our edges are kind of nicely dinged. And that's what you get with kind of a standard kind of looking sort of tile. It doesn't need, for photorealism, I think everyone's like, oh my God, it's all about the render, it's all about the lighting, but they don't think about much about the modeling. And um, it doesn't take much, so um, and always play around with these, the kind of the settings for the knife as well. Play around with the other settings. If you do go wrong and there's something so distinguishable that you can tell that every um, tile is a duplicate, just go onto the smooth settings, ease back the size a little bit, uh, and then just go over that um, area and it will smooth back um, the tile to what it once was. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we need to clone this, but before we do that, let's go to our Objects tab. And we're going to right click on this, our cube, or our title I should say, and then we're going to go down to Current State to Object. And what this will allow us to do is to have essentially two versions. As you can see, as soon as I click that, we've got an almost like an editable version here, and on top of that, we've got our sculpt, our sculpt version. So we can go back to this and that will make changes to our cube directly. So what we're going to do, is make sure that this um, cube here, I'm going to totally um, eliminate that so that's not popping in any renders and we're going to use this cube and we're going to use this in our cloner. So what I'm going to do is hold, is hold Alt on your keyboard, go to MoGraph, go to cloner and straight away the cloner will jump into the cube duplicating or cloning, which is the appropriate word, uh, clone our tile here. Obviously, if you want your tiles like this, perfectly fine. I don't. So what I'm going to do is go to Mode, change Linear to Grid Array. Whoa, there we go. And then I'm going to change our Grid Array for a three is good. I'm going to change the Y to one. And then, as you can see, they've all kind of molded in together here. So what I'm going to do is we've got size at 200. So if we change that to 400 there we go and then I'm not gonna do anything for the Y 
So 200 is fine and change this to 400, lovely. So already you can see without even any texture, we can see that obviously we could do a grid array of not just three, we'll do loads of different tiles, but you can see that this is already working really well. We've got our dents and it automatically creates these perfect seams um, within our um, within our tiles. It creates the kind of little cemented seams together. So, um, and that's really pretty much it. So if we have a look at creating, not creating, let's have a look, let's go back to, uh, do, 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 let's go back to startup. And let's see um, what bits and pieces, what kind of uh, material that we can put on here to kind of sell the effect of uh, some realistic tiles. And so let's type in, uh, I've got Chrome in there, let's take that out to stone. And what have we got in Cinema 4D's bank of goodies? Nice, so we've got granite and stone. Let's have a look at that. So I'm going to just drag that into here. Go back to our objects and drag that to our cube. That's not looking too bad. So we could probably, let's have a zoom in and have a look at those crap, those uh, seams here. Whoa, let's go back a little bit, come on. There we go, so what I'm gonna quickly do, you know, render settings, let's go to effect, let's add a bit of ambient occlusion, let's add a little bit of global illumination, and then physical sky, then if we just quickly render that off, let's see what happens. And there we go. So I've zoomed in quite a fair bit, but you can see that, you know, this is already quite looking quite nice. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, um, just to there or something. And we can, whoa, what's happened there? All of my light, lighting's gone, oh, flipped it totally upside down. Clever thing. Just render through that again. So again, it's just trial and error. I don't have any plugins, so I can't make it um, look amazing. Well, it looks pretty good for less than 10 minutes work. But you can see where what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to achieve. And already we can see that just with some real kind of um, materials that we can just find within Cinema 4D. Obviously you can download some bits and bobs offline. Um, but you, the main thing is what we're trying to achieve with the tiling here, that we can make it try and look realistic as possible, as quick as possible. Cool, um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and can't wait to see all your different tiles and walls that kind of look decrepit and damaged. Thank you very much.